بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد we are going to the Arabic class now and uh, we'll start from the page 25. Page 25 from the Arabic tutor. These are the common terminology that you will be coming across by the author when he will be explaining to us. So keep this like, you know, the way you remember the name of your beautiful wife and your beautiful uh, handsome husband and beautiful children. So you have to remember this terminology in the same manner. Yeah, uh, the young brothers are saying that we don't have wife. Alhamdulillah. Allah will keep you, inshallah. Oh, then show them and then keep them in it. Inshallah. Yeah, I also wanted to tell you that, mashallah, there are some brothers in London. They have, they're practicing brothers and they have got young daughters aged between, you know, 19 and 25, and they're looking for, you know, practicing brothers. So if you, if you know the brothers who are interested of that age. There's so many here. Alhamdulillah, but you have to, you know, uh, make me as a mediator so you will be always safe. When the punches will come, it comes, it will come to me, don't worry, inshallah. So please let me know, take it serious, inshallah. <coughs> okay, so the terminology here, you have to understand that on the left side of the column, there are Arabic terminologies which you have to come across all the time and this will help you even, insh inshallah, when you 
are le reading the Sharah of Arabic books in Arabic, so you will know the 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 Sheikh while while he's giving the explanation, he will use the word haraka, mutaharrik, sukun, fatha, nasr, like that. So all this terminology will help you with that, inshallah. So we start with this, we don't have to take much time in this, but alhamdulillah, generally we can just go quickly to this and then we'll start lesson one today, bidnillahi ta'ala. It says haraka, haraka, uh, diacritical points, uh, namely fatha, kasra, dhamma. In Urdu we say, zay is the word and page. So each one, each one is called haraka. Fatha is haraka, kasra is haraka, and dhamma is haraka. And all together they become harakat. Harakat. In plural, they become harakat. <coughs> Mutaharrik. A letter with a haraka. So, like for example, alif without haraka is alif. But when you put the haraka on alif, like fatha, it is mutaharrik. Now, alif is mutaharrik because it has got fatha on it. Alif is mutaharrik because it has got kasra underneath it. Alif is become mutaharrik. Alif is alif, but you give a second name to it when you call it as mutaharrik. Automatically, it should click in your head that it has got either fatha or dhamma or kasra. If it has got no fatha, no dhamma, no kasra, then it is alif. So any letter which has got fatha, dhamma, kasra, that letter is mutaharrik. Jispa harkat ho. In Urdu we say jispa harkat ho. Sukun, a diacritical point, also known as jazar. Now this sukun is, is some some of the Quranic versions that you see that uh, writing style. It has got a small circle, sphere-like, and sometimes it is got uh, you know has got half semicircle. So that is called sukun. And what does it do? It has got no role. Instead, it makes that particular letter silent. So you can't read that letter when you have a sukun on that letter and that letter, like if you have fatha, it will give you the sound as a. If you have kasra, it will give you the sound as e. If you have dhamma, it will give you the sound as u. But when you have sukun, nothing. It's as good as that. So it can't read by itself. So that sign is called sukun. So fatha is one sign, kasra is one sign. Bama is one side and Sukun is the fourth one. Fatha is Zabar in Urdu we call it. And right down on the side of it if you want, it gives you the sound as A. Kasra, it gives you the sound as E. And Bama, it gives you the sound as O. Not O. No. Urdu mein hum log O bhi bolte hai, lekin O Arabi mein nahi hai. There is no O in Arabic. It is O. Tanween. Yes, when you have two fathas, it is called Tanween of Fatha. When you have two Kasras together, it is called Tanween of Kasra. When you have two Dhammas together, it is called Tanween of Bamba. So Tanween automatically will make you understand that it is Two fathas or two kasras or two dhammas. Okay? This is called tanween in Arabic. And noon tanween. The sound of the noon created when reading the tanween. When you read an, in, un, an, in, un, na, 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 that na sound is called tanween, uh, noon tanween. The sound, that noon tanween is a sound. And that is the un sound that comes from your nose. Nose. Okay, maftuh. The letter, any letter, alif, ba, ta, ta, jim, ha, ha, dal, these are letters. But when you have fatha on that, it has got one name which is called mutaharrik. But what kind of mutaharrik is that? Specific uh, mutaharrik is maftuh. Alif is maftuh, which means alif has got fatha on it. Ba is maftuh, which means ba has got fatha on it. Maksur, the letter which has got kasra in it, underneath it. Like Alif has got fatha, it is maftuh. Alif has got kasra, it is called maksur. Alif has got dhamma, it is called magmum. 
So all the 28 letters, when they are with the harakat, they are called mutaharrik. But when they are specifically, you want to know what harakat is on that, then you call it maftur, maksur, or madmum. Sakin. Now tell me what is sakin. Don't look into the definition. <coughs> Don't look into the definition. One, the one has got fatha is maftur. The one has got sukun is sakin. Any letter which has got sukun on that, it is sakin. Peace. 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 Sukun will be Alhamdulillah. Okay. Mushaddad. Mushaddad means wo, that particular letter which has got shadda on that. This harpach tajdido. That letter which has got shadda on it is that letter is called mushaddad. Now try to understand. Please pay attention to my explanation here. When you are reading normal letters, it is Ali, Ba, Ta, Ta. These are the names of these letters. Like Abdullah, Muhammad, Isa, Yahya, Zakaria. So the names of the letters are Alif, Ba, Ta, Ta. But when you put the harakat, Zabar, Zair, Pesh, Fatha, Gumma, Kasra, then the, these letters without harakat, they were letters. Now they became mutaharrik because they have got vowels on them, harakat. And then because there are three different harakat, Fatha, Gumma, Kasra, based on that, we take the example of Jim for an example. Jim without any haraka, it is called Jim. But the moment you put fatha or dhamma or kasra, it becomes mutaharrik. When you put fatha and you want to say what kind of mutaharrik it is, you say maftur because fatha is there. When you put kasra, it becomes maksur. It is mutaharrik, but it is specifically with the kasra called maksur. With Dhamma, it is called Madmum. With Shadda, it is called Mushaddad. With Sukun, it is called Saki. Clear? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Maybe it won't go into your head for the first time, but you don't have to spend much time in this. It will come every time I will explain to you, inshallah. Ta'arif. Yeah, Ta'arif is means to define somebody. But here, when we talk about Ta'arif, is to make the uh, indefinite noun as definite. Indefinite noun as definite. Like non-specific noun will become specific. Okay? And that's very simple. In English what you say a book is non-specific. But when you say the book it is specific. specific. So that ending of the <coughs> is in Arabic called ta'arif. Clear? Tarkir, indefinite noun. Like for example, you have the word kitab. Kitab means a book. When you make it tarif, it becomes al-kitab. Al-kitab, the book. You made it definite. You take away al, you are making it indefinite. And that is called tarkir. Tarif, to make definite. Tarkir, to make it indefinite. Clear? <laughs> Love. The earth attached to a noon, a noun. That is called Lam Ta'arif. Lam Ta'arif means the alif and lam that you add to the Arabic word. For an example, you have the word kitab. Kitab does not have al. So it is a book. The moment you put al, it becomes al kitab, the book. So that alif lam, al, they have to be read together. These two letters should be read together. Though they are read together, alif and lam, they are two letters, but this lam is a specific lam. It is called lam ta'arif, which means it, when you add this al to the noun, that indefinite noun became definite. You have to respond to me. Yes. Yes. Now you are looking at me and you are not responding. So what about the sisters who are in the... <laughs> So please. Now as I am giving you the Arabic example and these examples will come practically. 
But you have to just understand today, simply, that Kitab without Al is a book. Al Kitab, it is the book. So this Al, though there are two letters, but in the text Arabic grammar it will be, you know, the term will be called as Lam Ta'rif. Which means automatically you have to understand that this noun was indefinite and it became definite by adding al to it. Mu'arraf billah. The noun which was indefinite became definite with lam ta'rif. That is called mu'arraf billah. That means the noun was without al, but now you put al and you made it. Definite, so it became Mu'arraf bil lam. It has become definite with the help of lam. Al. Singular is wahid, tathniya is dual, and jama'a is plural, yes. Ismu jama'i. Ismu jama'i is different than plural. The word by itself will be singular. Word by itself will be singular. But the meaning was it will be more than one person. Like for example the word people. Can you say Muhammad is a people? No. You can say the, the few Muhammad came to the masjid, they are the people, yes? Yeah. So people by itself is one word. But meaning wise it has got plural meaning, yes? That in Arabic it is called ismu jam'in. The word which has got singular name, but the meaning was it is plural. Clear? <coughs> like uh, seas. Sea. Uh, no? Like in you know, a river, rivers. Like yeah, that's a quantity of water, yes. Okay. Like group. Like, like you can say nation. Nation is one word, single word, but means it means people, group of people. Oh. <coughs> salt. Salt. Pepper. Salt, yes. It is not, you know, one piece. No quantity. Yes. You cannot quantify it. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Ismu Jabari. Tadkir. Tadkir is masculine noun. Mudakkar it is called. Ta'neef feminine is known as Mu'annath. Harufu Tahajji. Letters of alphabet, alif, ba, ta, ta, jim, ha. When they say huruf al means all the letters, one uh, alif to ya. Huruf al illa, yes, problematic letters. <laughs> Wahhabis, poor, proper Wahhabis. <laughs> problematic letters, alif, ba, ba, ya. Okay, remember that. Next page, 27. Al huruf al sahiha. Other than Alif Bawiya, all the harufs are miskeen, sahih, no, no error in that. Ba, ta, ta, jim, dal, ha, kha, dal, dal, ra, za, all they are, you know, sahih letters. But when you have Alif, Waw, and Ya, they are called letters of error or letters of, you know, problematic error letters because when you learn the verbs, when there are no alif and ya and wow in the verbs, okay, the verbs are sound. Like you want to say, da ha ba, he went. So, da is normal letter, ha is normal letter, ba is normal letter. <coughs> but you have got a kala, alif is there. Afterwards, when you want to change this to other, you know, terms, other, yeah, you know, the, when you want to make singular to plural and past tense to present tense, this alif will create problem there. Okay, so that is why it is known as huruf al-illa. Huruf al-illa, alif, wow, and ya. Yeah. Letters of, you know, error. Huruf al-sahiha, other than alif, wow, ya, all the letters are called huruf al-sahiha. Hamza. One hamza is that of the huruf of the Another hamza is an alif that is mutaharrik, a e u, or an alif having jazm like the alif of ra sun, which has got sukun on it. 
Okay, so there are five <laughs> alifs are there. Five alifs. One alif is called Hamza. That is normal Hamza. There is no Zayr, no Zabur, no Fatha, no Kasra, no Dhamma, no Sukun. It is normal Hamza, which is one of the letters. Hamza, Ha, Ya, like that you read in the Taharji, Haruf al -Taharji. And another Hamza is called Mutaharik Hamza, which means Alif has got Fatha, Dhamma, or Kasra. Or Alif has got Sukun. And these Hamzas, four Hamzas, which has got Fatha, it can be read as A, E, U, or A, A. The one which has got Sukun, that will be read as A, A, like that. Like you read Ra, Sun, you read as Ra, Sun. Alif is there, but you can't say Ra, A, Sun. It is, you can't say Ra, Sun. No, it is Ra, Ra, like hiccups. Okay, Ra, Sun. So that is called Alif with Sukun on it. Take him. Alhamdulillah. And Hamzatul Wasal. Hamzatul Wasal is miskin, you know, you, it can dissolve with anybody. So it has got no Fatha Kasra, so it can get dissolved into anybody. So how many alifs are there total? Six. Six. One alif is the huruf in the letters, Hamza, and the four are with the harakat. Fatha, Bamba, Kasra, and Sukun. And the fifth one is Alif which is used in the letters and the words, but it has got no fatha dhamma kasra by itself. It gets dissolved. It is called hamzatul wasal, which means it wasal, it makes, it unites. It is, it unites with the other letters, other words. So that is the sixth name of hamza or alif is called hamzatul wasal. Alhamdulillah. Please let me know when you, when you want to stop. Inshallah. Okay, the, the, the first lesson is not very hard, it's very easy inshallah. All we have to learn is today that what is the construction of the Arabic grammar, how the Arabic grammar is constructed. And these are very simple uh, grammar lesson because <coughs> there's no complication in this because even in English you learn this in your basic classes. So lesson one, words and types of words. Number one, <clears throat> a word having a meaning is called kalima. It is of three types. Ismun, fa'lun, harfun. So in Arabic, we don't talk about words. We talk as kalima. Okay? And any word which has got the meaning is called kalima. Write down. That definition is not here. You have to write down. Any word which has got meaning Okay, like if I say ah 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 ah, I can add six a's at one time. But can that give you any meaning? No, not even feeling. You say "garela put phas gaya shaykh sir." Okay, something got stuck in his throat. Okay, shaykh sir, normal se baat kare. So this is how the people might think. So even if somebody says it won't give you any meaning in that. Yes or no? But when somebody says Muhammad, when somebody says Akala, when somebody says Shariba, these words give you meaning. Okay? So, any word in Arabic which has got the meaning is called Kalima. Kalima. What is it called? Kalima. Kalima. Remember that. And this Kalima is divided into three parts. One is the noun, which is called Ismun. And the other one is verb which is called fi'lun and the third one is particles which is called huru, harfun. So kalima is the word which has got meaning in it and it is of three types ismun, fi'lun, harfun. Ismun, fi'lun, harfun. Now how to define these three? When I put all these three words in front of you, some, some words, words will be harf, some words will be fa'lun, and some words will be ismun. Now you have to learn from here, this is the standard definition to understand who, what is verb, what is uh, fa'l, okay, fa'lun, ismun, and harfun. 
So these, these are the foundation. You have to, whatever you are learning here, it should go into your head immediately. Because the more you learn, more, uh, the more you go ahead, and you don't understand the one that is, you have already read, then it will become difficult, complicated. So take it as if that you are learning like a newborn child, and first time you are learning like your mother tongue. Then only you will be able to, you know, cooperate and it will be easy for you. And it is a challenge of the author that you, there are four volumes in this. The author says that if you finish one book, one volume, it is guaranteed that you will be able to write Arabic official letters. Yeah, so please pay attention to this. Very simple. The words are called Kalima. And what is Kalima? Any word which has got the meaning. And it is of three different types. Ismun, Fa'ilun, Harfun. Now we will understand which one amongst three words, if, you, if three words are given to you, how will you be able to identify which one is word, uh, Harf, or which one is Fa'il, or which one is Ismun. Okay. And Ismun is independent of other words in indicating its meaning. It also does not have an, any tense. Example, Rajulun, Hamidun, Darbun, Tayyibun, Huwa, Ana. Now, what Sheikh is explaining to us, this is a standard definition of the noun in Arabic. First of all, noun will the, never will take any help of any other words to express its own meaning. Okay, for an example, if I say hand, do you need any other explanation to explain to you what is hand? So hand will give its meaning by itself, <laughs> independently. So automatically when you read the word hand, you will know it is a hand, a noun. Okay, second identification or second point to understand whether it is other than the half and fail is that it will not have any impact of the tenses. For an example, what's my name is? What is my name? Abdul Majid. Abdul Majid. What was my name yesterday? <laughs> Abdul Majid. What will be my name tomorrow? Abdul Majid. Abdul Majid. So past tense, present tense and future tense will have no impact on my name. This is the second definition for the noun. Noun will stand by itself in its meaning. Noun, noun will have no impact of tense. Clear? Yes. I think we stop here with noun. Okay, now. Inshallah. Now we should sit in the mind. Otherwise it will be too much. Alhamdulillah. And please take my email. Because if you have the email, then you can put the questions to me. And this book, mashallah, I'm not boasting, this book is in my head. So even at night, if you call me and say, Sheikh Saab, I want to know this particular issue in grammar, I will tell you, okay, go to that page and you will know, I'll explain to you. So alhamdulillah, you have to be, if you want to be my serious students, then you have to master this. And challenge me, inshallah. Question from the course which you... Gigi, yes, please. The hadith Jibrali. Yes. Bismillah. It is generally not understood that Jibrail al sam came to teach the people about uh, Iman. Ji. Rather than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught Jibrail al sam about Iman. Yeah. What's your question? The question is, is it not generally understood that Jibrail al sam came, from, basically from Allah's command, to teach about the Iman? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is, the hadith is very clear that Jibreel salam, actually he came to teach. That is why Rasulullah said, Atakum yu'allimukum deenakum. This is in Sahih Muslim. Atakum yu'allimukum deenakum. He came to you to teach you your deen. So Jibreel actually he came to teach, but as I, to, I gave you the example of a student, he knows the issue, Islamic issue. But he knows that some of my friends, they don't know. And they will not ask the sheikh. So he is asking the sheikh, though he knows the answer, so that others will know. 
And this is what Jibril has said, done, that he came to teach Rasulullah and <coughs> indirectly he was teaching the Sahaba. Yes. So the teacher was the Prophet. Yeah, that was at that time the, the teacher was Prophet of <laughs> So, inshallah, from next Thursday, uh, please, sisters, invite all the members that you know, mashallah, you will get the equal reward. And brothers, also, we will have, before Maghrib, we will have uh, fit classes. And after Maghrib, we will have part of it in Arabic, the Arabic classes, inshallah. But have patience with me. Once we are used to it, then it, inshallah, will go, you know, and Allah will bless us in this, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, inshallah. Wa alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. There is no homework needed. There is no homework now, but I'm going to give you, inshallah, hard time when we will come next time. Inshallah. <coughs> After two weeks, inshallah. After two weeks, Basically, <laughs> 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 <